luminous cosmic body is moving towards the Earth. On the way, the object accidentally collides with a satellite, after which it goes off course and flies towards New York at high speed. A boy named decides that it was the neighborhood kids who smashed the window with a baseball. But Josh is sure that the glowing ball flew to him directly from space. With surprise, the boy notices how the space rock is sucking all the water out of the aquarium along with his fish. Three months later, a large fiery meteorite approaches Earth and crashes at the Statue of Liberty in New York. A completely unharmed man rises from the resulting crater. He looks like an ordinary person, but his further behavior gives doubt to his adequacy. With the help of some invisible force, the guest from outer space cleans his snow-white suit of dirt and moves along the embankment with a strange gait. Along the way, he closely watches the people around him and tries to copy their every movement and facial expressions. Not understanding how the traffic light works, the man crosses the road on a red light. There, he is immediately hit by a car driven by Gina Morrison. The shocked woman runs up to the victim, hoping that he survived. The man quickly recovers, but Gina notices that his leg is twisted unnaturally. The woman wants to call an ambulance, but the unusual man disappears before she can make the call. Hiding in an alleyway, he activates his ear. It opens like an automatic gate and two tiny people in hazmat suits step out. One of them goes down to the broken leg and opens the passage inside. So it turns out that the man is a spaceship controlled by hundreds of small humanoid creatures. An autonomous department is responsible for each action of the android ship, which is located in a certain part of the body. In the head of the robot is the captain of the spaceship, which looks exactly like the ship itself, designed in his likeness. One of the subordinates reports to the captain, that due to an unexpected collision, the system did not have time to activate the protective fields. Despite the fact that the ship will be able to continue to function, its charge will last a maximum of two days on Earth time. The ship's tracking system was also damaged in the crash. The captain decides to call an emergency meeting with the crew, so it becomes known that Nile, the home planet of humanoids, is on the verge of an energy catastrophe. To save it, three months ago they sent a device to Earth that was supposed to dry up all the oceans. Salt extracted from the water will be able to provide their planet with a supply of energy for many centuries to come. After a collision with a satellite, the device was lost somewhere in New York. In order to prevent the death of his people, the captain orders the team to do everything possible to find the orb within the next 48 hours. The team begins the mission and only the captain, his deputy number 2 and assistant number 3 remain in the control center. To make the android more human, number 3 googles more information about people. She worriedly informs the captain that the draining of the earth can lead to the death of the planet, but he cares little about the future fate of the earthlings. Josh tells his mom about a strange man under their windows. She recognizes him as the victim and goes downstairs to apologize to him for the accident. With excitement, the humanoids prepare for the first verbal contact with a human. At first, the robot speaks in a too high voice from which the bottles explode, then too low, as if preparing to sing the blues. The aliens finally manage to stabilize their voice and the robot tells Gina that he's fine. The girl sends Josh to school and invites the stranger to her house to treat him to breakfast. The man agrees to the proposal and introduces himself as Dave Ming Chen, formed from the most popular human names. The humanoids inside the robot look around Jean's apartment with interest and try to learn new activities for themselves, such as cooking breakfast. The captain notices a photo of Josh from a science fair presenting the space rock as his science project. Having found his main target, the captain orders the humanoids to find the boy's location. Meanwhile, cops Dooley and Knox go to Liberty Island to find the cause of a mysterious crater. Knox is not too excited about the new task, unlike his partner, who is serious about solving the case. He carefully examines the ground and makes a cast of a human face, which is imprinted in the soil. After the officers send out an orientation for a man throughout the city, Dave goes outside trying to track Josh through a crowd of teenagers. He walks into a hardware store by mistake and tries on the new headphones the salesman gives him. Because of the loud music, all the systems of the robot fail, and the little aliens start to go deaf. Horrified by the new discovery, Dave runs out of the store. Along the way, the humanoids continue to study humans and realize that their world isn't all that bad. However, Number 2 sees only the terrible in the Earthlings and speaks with disgust about their actions. Dave's suit attracts the attention of passers-by too much, so the captain decides to go shopping for new clothes. In the store, the robot tries its best to look normal, but still catches the surprised looks of customers. To pay for the purchase, Dave goes to the fitting room, where he prints money through his anus. Finally the robot reaches the school. The principal mistakes Dave for a new teacher and sends him to Josh's class. Having come up with a task for the children, the robot takes Josh to the corridor to ask him about the device. The boy says that the sphere was taken from him by a bully named Rich and after class he can be found in a store with slot machines. Dave goes there with the boy, but they don't find the bully there. Armed robbers burst into the store and greatly frighten visitors. Dave takes down the bandits with ease and breaks their weapons, which delights Josh. 
The boy invites Dave to go with him and his mom to the fair tomorrow, which might include Rich. Number two advises the captain not to waste precious time on this and suggests that they immediately go in search of the bully. The captain does not agree with the assistant and intends to keep the boy company in order to enlist his help. Josh brings Dave to his house, where he enjoys playing video games. Gina returns home and the boy enthusiastically tells her about how the man dealt with the robbers. Josh sadly remarks that he would like to be as big and strong as him so that he would not be bullied at school. Dave reassures the boy by saying that in the vastness of the universe, the brightest energy comes from the smallest stars. In gratitude for saving her son, Gina invites Dave to have dinner with them. Number 4, in charge of the ship's security, warns the captain that prolonged exposure to people increases the risk of being exposed. But the man ignores the warnings and agrees to dinner. In the evening, Dave admires the painting that Gina has painted. The girl says that the painting depicts the feelings she had for her dead husband. While listening to Gina's love story, number three looks at the captain and realizes that she feels something similar for the captain. Dave goes outside and sits next to a homeless man. The man shares his blanket with the robot to keep it warm at night. The captain is shocked by the good deed of the homeless man and realizes that the earthlings are not as terrible as they thought at first. A day spent on earth changed many humanoids. Thanks to what they saw, they began to have an interest in dancing, art, and even flirting. Number three stays up late in the control center and the captain comes to see her, who also cannot sleep. The girl reports that she has found an interesting file that every earthling must watch once a year. She invites the captain to watch it together to better understand human nature. It turns out to be the cult Christmas movie called It's a Wonderful Life. The aliens watch with tears in their eyes as the protagonist of the film promises his beloved to get the moon from the sky. A romantic spark runs between the captain and number three, but they stop themselves and go to bed. The next day, the robot has only 20% of its charge left and the police are actively looking for it. To find the device, Dave goes with Gina and Josh to the fair. There, he rides all sorts of rides and wins a hot dog eating contest. After winning a soft toad toy, the humanoids mistake it for an alien monster that attacked them one day. After a while, they realize that the toy is harmless and Dave gives it to Gina. The robot goes to the toilet to empty the compartment with 85 hot dogs. Along the way, he meets Mark, Gina's neighbor. The man is not indifferent to the neighbor and threatens Dave with violence if he breaks Gina's heart. The captain sincerely does not understand how he can like a woman the size of their scientific core. Dave notices Josh being bullied by the school bullies. The android shakes out all the nonsense out of the evil child and takes the cosmic sphere from him. Dave then suggests that Josh and his mom go to a restaurant to celebrate Gina's birthday. Number 2 becomes furious at the captain's behavior and insists on getting the orb to its intended use as soon as possible. But Dave managed to become attached to the new acquaintances and wants to thank them for their help in finding the device. He takes them to a Cuban restaurant where they have fun, drink cocktails and dance salsa. While the android was having fun with people, the humanoids also managed to feel sympathy for their lifestyle, hobbies and culture. Upon entering Number 4's office, Number 3 discovers that he has transformed it into a pop diva's home. The girl shares her experiences with the colleague and admits that she is jealous of the captain and Gina. Number 4 helps her readjust and she goes to the control center to ask the captain to dance. The man looks at the subordinate in amazement, but at the same moment, Gina also asks Dave to dance. He agrees to dance with Gina, and a hurt Number 3 leaves in tears. Number 2 is unhappy with how this planet affects his colleagues. He decides to gather like-minded people to arrange a riot on the ship and remove the captain. Meanwhile, the police are finally able to locate the man from the face cast. They arrive at the restaurant and detain Dave. The captain orders his subordinates not to resist in order to avoid civilian casualties. The android is taken to the police station, and Gina and Josh are left completely bewildered. Dooley and Knox interrogate Dale to find out why he came to Earth. Before the man can answer, Number 2 stages a coup d'etat and takes over the android's control center. The winning team is joined by Number 3, who wants to finish the mission as soon as possible and leave the planet. The humanoids forget to turn off Dave's loudspeaker and the cops become bystanders of the conversation inside the robot's head. So Dooley is convinced that a real alien is sitting in front of them. Having gained power, Number 2 orders the crew to blast the wall with blasters to get out of the precinct. The police shoot at him, but the robot continues to move forward and destroy everything around him. Alien Number 17 decides to escape from the ship and straight into a coffee mug. To save the ship from the mad dictator, Number 3 frees the captain from imprisonment. Next, the couple tries to get into the engine room to turn off the robot, but they are caught by security. As punishment for insubordination, Number 2 sneezes the violators out, and they end up in the middle of a busy street. Small humanoids are trying to get back to the ship, while escaping from the dangers of the vast world of people. Number 3 is blown by air onto the road, where she sticks to a gum. The girl does not want the captain to save her, because she is still angry at him because of the dance with Gina. 
The captain assures number three that he is only interested in her and only paid attention to Gina for the good of the mission. The man manages to free the subordinate and with the help of a bag they reach the robot's leg. The captain confesses his feelings for the girl and says that for her sake he would have taken the moon out of the sky. The starship runs out of power and number two orders the crew to grab a taxi to get to Liberty Island. Meanwhile, Dooley finds a humanoid in his coffee cup. Number 17 tells the policeman that the robot is going to suck all the water out of the earth. The officer puts the stranger in his pocket and asks him to show where Dave went. Josh does not believe that Dave can do evil of his own free will. He persuades his mother and Mark to go after the alien to help him. On the island, Number 2 prepares to launch the device into the water, but the captain foils his plans and puts the robot into manual control. Enraged, Number 2 again orders the captain to be detained, but the crew refuses to obey. The team no longer wants to destroy the Earth, so they reinstate the captain. Number 2 is sent deep into the back of the ship. The sphere accidentally slips out of Dave's hands and falls into the water, after which the withering process begins. The captain directs all of the robot's remaining reserve of energy to get the orb back and save the Earth. Josh and his family run to Dave. He wants to help the alien, but he says that his energy supply is running out and the ship will not be able to take off. The police arrive on the island and aim at Dave. The captain is informed that without energy, the shells from their weapons will pierce the ship's hull and the crew will suffer huge losses. Josh grabs a stun gun from a police officer and charges Dave. The captain decides to go outside and talk to people in person. The alien tells that earlier the spaceship was captured by his assistant and it was he who behaved aggressively. He thanks Josh and Gina for their help and promises not to harm the Earth anymore, but to find another way to save their home planet. Number 3 joins him and the captain confesses that, thanks to people, he understood the feelings that Gina had when she painted her picture. Officer Dooley returns Number 17 to the ship and the aliens are going home. On takeoff, Dave is surrounded by the FBI who throw a net at him. But the entire crew manages to evacuate into the robot's boot and fly away to their own planet, leaving the body of Dave and Number 2 on Earth. To the applause of the crew, the captain kisses number three and offers her the position of his chief second-in-command on the ship.